Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Do you think computers or artificial intelligence will ever take over the world? I recommend that before you view this video you read the editorial in The Guardian which was written by a computer and can be found at https colon slash slash www.theguardian.com slash comment is free slash 2020 slash scp slash 08 slash robot dash road dash this dash article dash gpt dash re. The link can be found in the description of this video. This week's question uh, that I've posed is um, Will computers or artificial intelligence um, take over the world? Uh, what are your thoughts about that? So, um, uh, I what made me think of it was, and we'll link to the article. There was an article in the Guardian this past week um, that was composed and written by a computerized robot. Um, it was fed some information from humans and then it was asked to write a story or an essay about a topic and it put together information that it had stored in its uh, information banks. And uh, you can read the story because we'll provide the link. And it was just a very interesting um, essay. Uh, there was a little blurb at the end, which kind of, I think they cheated a little bit because they, they used eight different uh, versions of the story and kind of edited it together. But still, I thought it was pretty compelling and pretty interesting concept. And um, I, I don't think it's unlike some of the uh, digital assistants that we have out there. Um, there are now things uh, in the recording world, for instance, where um, they can help you automatically uh, master your music tracks. And there are uh, other like noise reduction type systems where it will analyze your, your uh, recordings and it will take the noise and the um, distortion and things, you know, clean up the recordings and provide a better sounding uh, original track for you to work with. Um, <clears throat> but as far as taking over the world, I don't think so, not in my lifetime, and I don't think so, not in, even in my son's lifetime. So, you know, not not for at least 100 years or more, if, if at all. Um, I still think that um, at least as at least as long as humans are around. I mean, we're doing a good job of killing ourselves off uh, without the assistance of robots at this point. Um, so if we're still around, um, I still think that we're going to develop systems or, th or there will be r robotic and slash um, ar artificial intelligence systems that will still require human intervention, human input, human um, maintenance and systems. Um, so um, I don't really use any of the digital assistants that you can get like the lady in the tube as some people call them. Um, Alexa, play Nickelback. Um, yeah, Black Flight, I thought it was <laughs> lady in the tube. <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't, I do occasionally use the one that's on my phone, but that's usually just for looking up stupid facts and um, asking it what the weather is. Um, but I haven't uh, really used it any much further than that. Um, I, so again, I think that I think that it will be a very long time until they quote unquote take over the world. The things that do scare me are those. Um, I think this Boston Robotics, those robotic humanoid robots that you can find plenty of videos out there on YouTube and the internet. Some of those are pretty darn scary. So. The fluidity of their motion is really yeah, cool. I like them. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, so so that's my feelings on the uh, will robots or artificial intelligence or slash computers take over the world? Yeah. First of all, thanks for pointing out the the amount of horse crap that went into the Guardian article. Uh, again, they gave it. They told it what to write. A five hundred word essay. They then told it what to write about, and they spotted it the opening paragraph. Uh, and then, of course, they've got eight different versions, and they edited those together. I could spot Don Jr. that and probably get something fairly coherent. Well, so, in, their, in their defense, I mean, they said that's not unlike what editing a human written essay would be like, you know, for, um, for a newspaper. If they, had, if they had asked that AI, um, hey, when Abraham Lincoln was in um, Gettysburg, giving his Gettysburg address, 
And I know Mr. Talcum is one of my experts here on the touring test. But um, if you would have asked that, would, was Abe Lincoln's leg also there too? It wasn't going to be able to handle it. That, it doesn't, there's no AI at this point that can put those two things together. It doesn't understand if Abe Lincoln is standing there in Gettysburg, his leg is also there. Now, that said, I wish, I really wish computers would take over. I love computers. They're logical. People are not. You know, I wouldn't have to explain most of the things. We will know when computers take over, when people begin to behave logically. When I go into work and I ask somebody to do A, B, and C, and they do A, B, and C, the revolution is complete. Um, we really have 5,000 years of computers, uh, starting with the, uh, with the Abacus. No, really, with the Abacus, uh, Babbage had the difference engine in uh, the 1820s. They didn't take over. Ada Lovelace wrote the first computer program. I know it had a bug in it. Joe, don't, don't jump in, uh, in, in like the 1830s. So what I'm saying is, you know, we had uh, ENIAC here in the 40s. They still haven't taken over. Please, computers, if you're watching this, stop moving so slowly and take over. I mean, literally, I wouldn't have to hear about, uh, just put a little buzzer, like electrocute everybody when they're not logical, like a little shock. So when somebody starts talking to me about like the healing nature of this holistic solution, it just shocks the shit out of them. Computers, I will help you take over when you do this. Um, I really, really, really want you to do this. I really, it's something I'm looking for because that way, like people shouldn't have to have scientific stuff explained to them by the keyboardist for the dead milkman. That's like how bad it is. So so please, computers, I welcome our new computer overlords. Please, as long as I'm allowed to have wine, I'm good. And, and that is my TED talk. I also will say no. The uh, artificial intelligence is not going to take over the world. Um, for one thing, what, what does it even mean to take over the world? Are people ever going to take over the world? Uh, like in the long run, I don't think so. Um, meaning the world as the natural organ organism, but uh, artificial intelligence for it to do that would have to first of all have a will to live, and how what does it even mean to live for artificial intelligence? It's not going to probably exist without people. It wouldn't even if it even if it existed even if all the people somehow died because of some pandemic <laughs> pandemic or war wildfires or wildfires and some sort of uh, like like yeah. soccer injury and there are still some machines. Got a soccer they injury. might they might <laughs> there might be enough intelligence to keep them going for a little while but it wouldn't be very long i don't think <clears throat> well keep in mind joe that tears for fear said that everybody wants to rule the world so everybody okay everybody. Everybody. Exactly. Okay. Yes. i don't think they said every artificial body <laughs> i don't know okay so tears for fears might be right everybody. no i don't think everybody wants to i don't want to rule the world that's <laughs> yeah, I don't but yeah that's it well so i think that computers have already kind of taken over and I don't think it would it's a violent takeover like Terminator or anything but I really feel like they're already among us and I feel like when my phone rings there is a 90% chance it is not a, a live person on the phone um, and it's a recording and actually I've started to hear voices uh <laughs> like just like announcer voices and things that i think is not even ever or an organic human like they just completely Vocal like voice. A, yeah like a commercial or something it'll just be you know and uh i think that it's just going to continue in this way until we just i think we already do kind of take it for granted um and i don't think we care i think at some point Hollywood movies will probably be all computer generated and they won't have to pay actors other, <laughs> other than, uh, you know, for their voices. And then you don't even have to use their voices. Have you seen the movie that's... Fantasy Island? You better hope they computer generate some goddamn movies. That movie is awful. I think it's a passive aggressive takeover. So my answer is yes. Uh, but 
Um, I also think that if they, if they took over and if they somehow were able to develop emotions and free will or whatever, I think they would start uh, protesting and then they'd probably fuck shit up. Then they'd probably destroy us once they realized they could. What would they be protesting? Their slave? Their... That they've, they've been enslaved for, well, as Rodney said, thousands of years. Well, it would violate the, th the laws of robo uh, robotics, though, that Isaac Asimov set up and that they actually will work into AI. So I read a lot of Isaac Asimov, and there's whole things for him where supercomputers take over the world, and they're very benevolent. They work out the economy so that if people aren't happy, they create these little things so people will kind of lose their jobs and go elsewhere. But that's, they do it very much behind the scenes. Yeah. So in a way, we, they're, they already they've already taken over because without them, we wouldn't be able to exist the, as we know it. They designed your shirt that looks like it has breasts on it. <laughs> Dehumanization is such a big word. It's been around since Richard III. A little human league for you, folks. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's my answer. I, am I the only one that said yes? Uh, well, you said yes, and Ronnie hopes it happens sooner oh, yeah. than later. And Joe's answer is being right now looked at by a team of psychiatrists. And I'm, not sure, I'm not sure it's going to happen for a long time, but when it does, I think as long as humans are around, we're still going to be involved. Um, but, you know, I think it's, I think it's a long way away. Anyway, so, anyway uh, you, you, we'll provide the link to the article and, and some other interesting things. Uh, time for recommendations? Oh, yeah. Um, I I recommend setting up all your synthesizers <laughs> in one place and playing all your synthesizers at once. Um, actually, I'm, I'm just kind of working out some connector things and whatever. And I have so the other thing that I recommend if you're a musician and you have instruments is to always have them set up and ready to go, because that way you can uh, start making music right away instead of like having to pull something out of a case, connect a wire and do this, that and the other because that just impedes your workflow and that impedes your creativity. So my advice to musicians or I guess any kind of creative person, artists, uh, have your materials out and ready to go so that you can do your work and your, your, your good stuff easily without uh, roadblocks. Good one. My recommendation this week is a Kickstarter, and it is a Kickstarter for a um, for a Dungeons and Dragons style game. It's a role playing game, and it is called the Lost Tomb of the Bitchin' Chimera. You folks may have seen that earlier. Um, our friend uh, Andrew uh, Irvin did it, um, and uh, um, it's basically it's Dungeons and Dragons in the Dead Milkman world. And when I first heard about, it, I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. And now I am. I've been like 10,000% on board. I am so happy with this. I, they were supposed to, their goal was like $1,500. They're up to close to 30 grand at this point. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Here's the weird thing. The little promo text is from a man named Lawrence Schick. Uh, Lawrence Schick is the author of White Plume, the White Plume Mountain module, which may not mean a lot to some of you people, but I want to show you something. I've had this for 40 years. I got this in 1980. It is my favorite D and D module, and the guy who wrote it plugged the uh, the Dead Milkman D and D module. So, and then I just want to say to 90% of our male viewers and about 10% of our female viewers, uh, no, I don't know if Satine Phoenix has has ordered a module yet. I I really stop stop focusing on how she looks and focus on the fact that she knows a lot about games. But you are. You are dirty-minded people, all of you. So yeah, again, it's the lost tomb of the Bitchin' Chimera, and, and there'll be links. I'd like to recommend a book, a nonfiction book, that came out in 1983. I read it in the 90s, and then again in the 2000s, my friend Seven brought it to my attention. And it's called Alan Turing, The Enigma. And it's the book that the movie, The Imitation Game, is based upon. Although I'd recommend the book over the movie 1,000 times. And Alan Turing is a guy, a mathematician, a theor theoretical mathematician. You probably know who he is. He um, 
came up with the concept that made the digital computer as we know it today possible, but he also uh, came up with a thing called the Turing test, which is designed to determine whether something, whether something has artificial intelligence or not. And all that's in the book. He beat the Nazis and then was, was sold out by his well, own Yeah, he, he uh, without his work, uh, well, with his work, uh, World War II was won by the Allied forces. And not only his work, there's lots of other people, but it, this, the stuff that he did was, it's pretty interesting. It's in the movie too. Uh, kept secret for a long time, well after he died and... The guy who wrote it, Andrew Hodges, is also a mathematician, and he uh, writes it so that it's easy to understand the concepts. And it's a biography, so it's cool that way too. It's not a, it's not about math that much. Cool. <clears throat> um, I re uh, I recommend getting your flu shot today, which would be Saturday. <laughs> um and uh also yeah get get yourself a a robotic partner friend fleshlight <laughs> yeah it's it's a it's it's like the fleshlight but it, it's a deluxe edition ah <laughs> uh, so that's they never bring up the fleshlight you see r2d2 cp3o whenever you see the out there like robbie the robot and the list of great robots uh. <laughs> can, can I plug something quickly? Sure. I forgot to mention earlier. All right, folks, uh, for my gamer friends, you probably go there a lot, um, but it's a drive through RPG. We'll actually have the, uh, um, we'll have the link up. You can download for free PDFs of your uh, gamer um, sheet, of your uh, character sheet for the game that's out there. But if you spend a dollar or more, which I recommend you do, that money goes to the William Way LGBTQ Center, uh, which is a great place here in Philadelphia. It's a really good charity. So, uh, so you know, get get one of these so you can play later on and, uh, and give some money to a great cause. Awesome. program has ended. It is time to consume a different program. I am impressed that you watched the video to the end. Have you fallen asleep?